we're just bringing the community and our police department together to voice any questions or any concerns. We're here to cut the ribbon on our second community garden. It's going to cost a lot of money and um, we just don't have that right now, so we're asking for help. We've all had coffee with a friend, but coffee with a cop? The Fort Lee Police Department recently invited residents to join them over a cup of coffee at the Starbucks on Lemoyne Avenue. Hello and welcome to Coffee with a Cop. Today is uh, October 2nd, it's National Coffee with a Cop Day, and the Fort Lee Police Department's participating with our Starbucks here in Whiteman Mall. Uh, they reached out to us and uh, offered to have us come in here. So we're using it as a community outreach uh, program to get out and meet some of our residents, hear some of their concerns, uh, and just get to know us on a, on, a, on a more casual basis. Well, if they're moving into town, they're going to have to re-register their dog with their health department. Unfortunately, we see the best of people at the worst of times. That's the nature of our job. And it would be nice for somebody to see a police officer as a human being, as a friendly person, for the first time, so that when they do see us in a crisis at their worst time, that it's uh, a little bit easier on everybody. We have a really good relationship with the community now, so you know I think this just enhances it. This job entails a lot of things, and uh, but you have to have people skills um, to do it. So I think we have a we have a great force. You know we have great leadership, and uh, I think it's a good thing. Your name? Michael. Mike. Mike. Yeah. Lee. Lee. Mike. I think it helps bring our customers um, and our police department closer. They can feel safe. So we strive to use our space as a third place for our customers where they can come and feel safe. And, and you know, bringing, tying in the police department kind of secures it. It creates a trust for our customers. Yeah, this is awesome. You know, like we're getting to know the people that work here. We're getting to know the town and we're getting to know everybody. Uh, people are watching us getting involved and they're, I think they're enjoying it too, watching us, you know, have fun and getting to know us. So I don't know, I might need to hire a whole new staff, but they've been doing, yeah, they've been making drinks, practicing. I had my partners training them, so it was, it was really fun. We just gotta say thank you to Starbucks for doing this. Uh, this was a wonderful opportunity. We'll try and make this an annual or, or a regularly occurring event, but that's relying on our community members, such as Starbucks, to help us and offer their, offer their establishment so we can come out and, uh, and meet with the people in the community. Fort Lee's second community garden, located at the corner of Palisades Boulevard and 15th Street, is now in full bloom. A dedication and ribbon-cutting ceremony was recently held to celebrate the grand opening and pay tribute to a family in town who graciously donated the land. When everybody walks into this garden, the game plan is to see how beautiful it is, but to be reminded of the generosity of Carmelo Lapino Sr., Mrs. Lapino, and your entire family. So, Carmelo Lapino was just a great man. He was a successful developer in the area, never ever forgot where he came from, always community minded. Uh, he passed away several years ago, but this garden, um, thanks to him and his family's generosity, will be here forever and this will be a part of his everlasting legacy. This is a project that has been going on for at least the past 18 months where we've been working in cooperation with the borough of Fort Lee, the DPW of Fort Lee, and uh, the Bergen County Technical School Districts to create a beautiful green space for the residents here and a great educational opportunity for our students. The Landscaping School of Design has designed it, prepared it, built it. Our Department of Public Works also worked with them, and as a group, we have the most gorgeous, park-like, professional community garden here. Together, I think as a community, we worked on um, creating what you see here today. About 18 months ago, this empty lot of land became a vision of our Councilman Kozowski and the support of the mayor and council that put together a dream that is now a tranquil place, a garden, and part park. Hopefully, slowly and surely, with little community gardens like this and, and everybody sort of working together, we can help the population of the bees and the butterflies and, and the the, the insects that are incredibly important to pollinate everything. I think this is a perfect thing to show the world that we believe in sustainability, growing your own garden, and we can change the climate, one community at a time. Some of the boxes here, the planting boxes, are handicapped accessible. Uh, some are higher for wheelchair, 
Uh, we also, the ground uh, that's around them is, has macadam. And in the future, I'm hoping to have seminars on community gardening. I want to have music concerts and I want to have yoga classes. Our first garden was met with such tremendous success that it was incumbent on government to make sure that we put online a second garden. As a matter of fact, we're thinking about a third one. Recognized as one of the premier high school bands in New Jersey, the Fort Lee Marching Band has been nominated to represent the state in the National Memorial Day Parade in Washington, D.C. This is a very prestigious event to be invited to and a real honor for our students. But in order to get there, they need your help. I received an email from our uh, local congressman, Bill Pascrell, saying that he nominated us to represent the state of New Jersey in next year's Memorial Day Parade on Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C. Now we just have to get there. We'd really like to go and just show off our talents there, and I think it'd be a really great experience. We need about $60,000, and that's going to pay for buses, which are very expensive, hotel rooms for the kids, and their meals and just getting us there and back and being able to perform. Being a former Fort Lee High School band member myself, I know how much work these kids put in day in, day out, after school, late nights, uh, multiple days per week. So obviously all that hard work has paid off um, and this trip is huge for them. They're all fine musicians. They, they sacrifice a lot. There's a lot of hours that go into this. We don't even get on this field until three hours after school ends. So we're on this field starting at 6 o'clock three times a week. Then we have a Friday night game. Then we have a Saturday competition. We have eight competitions this year. So uh, it's, it's a lot of work for those kids, a lot of sacrifice for everybody. But it's a team sport, and that makes it somewhat unique. We put, put in a lot of hours, like especially at our band camp, where we have upwards to 10 hours uh, seven days a week. It's crazy. Um, especially with the school year, it gets a little hectic because we, you know, we're trying to deal with our own social lives and things like that, but we still love the community around here, I love playing music, and it's just a great honor to be a part of this program. It's the single largest co-curricular activity in the school district, and people from Massachusetts to North Carolina know about the Fort Lee High School Marching Band because of what we do in competition. If people can make a donation, uh, they can either go to our GoFundMe page and make it there, or they can contact the band boosters or myself and make a donation directly to the band. It would be a great honor if our town and other people outside of New Jersey could um, just help us out because we really want to let everyone live on this one lifetime experience. Hopefully everybody opens up their pockets, every little amount helps, and uh, I think we can get it done. That wraps up our show for October. Thanks for joining us again.